Okay, if you're playing the piano as an accompaniment for a singer, a useful skill is to be able to play the song in any key. Take this um, Sam Smith song, I'm Not the Only One, um, as an example. Now he has a very broad range and he can sing high notes, no problem, but you might find the highest notes, or the singer might find the highest notes, very difficult to reach. This last part, he's actually singing all the way up here. Now, um, not many people can get that high. So if the singer can't reach those notes, then what you have to do is you have to take the piece down into a range that your singer can sing, that they can work with. So, you might take the um, piece down to this sort of range. Alternatively, the singer might be able to reach the high notes, but not the low ones. Uh, this might happen if the song is written for a male vocalist, but it's a female singer singing your version. So you might have to take the song up into a So you've got to be able to quite quickly know how to change um, and play the same thing in different keys. Now this is called transposition or transposing a piece of music. If you know the singer's range and you can play the song, um, then you have to be able to play the song in the best key for the singer. And this is how it works. First of all, you have to know what key you are in. Um, the Sam Smith version is in the key of F. Um, I think usually at the song, if the song ends, you've got to look at the last chord to see what key you're in. Uh, we're quite clearly in F major here. The song starts in F and it ends in, ends in F. So we're in F major. Now we call that chord the one chord. We start using Roman numerals to describe the chord because we're going to take it into different keys. In this um, home, in the, in the key that uh, Sam Smith sings in, the chords are named with the left hand part. The verse and the chorus plays in this sequence, an F chord, an A chord, there's the A, and then a D chord, and then a B flat chord. So that sequence was F, A, D, and B flat. There's one other chord at the end, it's a C chord. So we have five different chords. Now we use Roman numerals to indicate which degree of the scale these chords are. This here is a little map of the chords that I played. I played F, A, D, B flat. I did that again, F, A, D, B flat. And the third time, F, A, D, B flat, a little bit at the end, F, C, F. Now, if we're in the key of F, then F itself is called the one chord. We give it the Roman numeral one. Where is A in the scale of F? It's the third note, it's the third note of the scale of F. So we give it the Roman numeral three. Where is D in the scale of F? It's the sixth note, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we give it the Roman numeral six. B flat is the fourth note in this scale of F. We give it the Roman numeral four. Then we go back to F into our five, which is C. Yes, C is five notes up in the scale of F. And then back to one. The uppercase Roman numerals indicate that we're playing a major chord. 
That first chord is major because we have the A natural in it. This would be minor. So it's a major chord, we give it an uppercase. This A chord, again it has a major third in it, it has a C sharp in it, so it must be a major chord. The chord sounds slightly nicer with this G in it. So we say it's a seventh. So we're going from F major to A7, our sixth chord. It's usually minor, in this case it is minor because it's got the minor third, not the major third. That's the major third, that's the minor third. So the sixth chord is minor. And the four chord. The four chord is played two slightly different ways. The first two times it's played like this, and the third time it's played like this. This is a B flat chord, B flat major with the B flat in. If we substitute that B flat for the as an A, we get what's called a major seventh chord, which we indicate with this little triangle. So that's played ever so slightly different the first two times, the third time. And then lastly, we're going to play this five chord, the five chord, a C major chord, back into the one chord. Now, now that we have turned our chord structure into Roman numerals, we can now play in any key. Because all we need to do is to apply these numbers to whatever key we're in. Now, as an example, I've put the piece of music here down a tone and a half into the scale of D. For those people that can't reach these high notes in the in the uh, F, we're now here. So it's slightly easier to reach the higher notes. If we're in the scale of D, then D is now our one chord because it's the first note. Our three chord is now F sharp because F sharp is the third note of the scale of D. Our sixth chord is B minor. Remember this hand doesn't have to move now as we change it into the four chord. And we've got the same piece of music in a different key. It goes from D F sharp 7 to B minor to G major 7 and the last time make the G chord just a normal G chord D A D I put this le these little arrows by the way in case you're wondering just to indicate that at this section here we're playing up beats. There's four beats in the bar. The first two chords are played on the down beat. Da, 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 da. That's the down beat. One and two and two and two. As we come into the next bar, one and two and they're on up beats. Da, 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 da. One, one and two and two. It's there. It's on the upbeat. See how that's up? That's an upbeat. It's, it's going up. You'd strum upwards on the guitar rather than downwards. So these little arrows just tell me in my abbreviated version here that I'm going to play on the upbeat. Beat at the end as well. Okay, so that was taking us down into from F 
into the key of D. Okay, so what if the singer can reach those up, those high notes, but they can't reach the low notes? Then you have to take the piece of music upwards. So we're going to go up from F, up two notes, up two full tones to the key of A, and we'll play the same thing in A. So the first part, we make our A chord. Um, the first little part hammers from the minor third onto the major third. Our three chord is now C sharp seven. Our sixth chord is F sharp minor. Don't move this hand, just change the bass note to D for our four chord. Our one chord. Our three chord again. Our six. And our four chord. Third time round, one. Three chord. Six chord. Our four chord played straight, and then one five one, one five one. Yeah, you have the piece of music in three different keys. This theme's main, this song's main theme, this what we've been playing, is played throughout the whole verse and the chorus. So. It doesn't change all the way through the piece of music. Um, there is, however, a middle eight, what we call a middle eight, and that's where the song changes for eight bars. In the middle eight, the uh, chords are actually the same. They're just in a slightly different order. I'll just show you the order of the chords in this last key that we were playing in A major. So the middle eight is eight bars. It starts with our four chord. Then into our one chord. Our three chord. Our six chord. Back into the four chord, the D. one chord A. Now this chord here is uh, slightly different. This is a new chord. We have been playing the five chord as an E. This is a slight change. It's called a suspended fourth chord. You can hear the slight difference in sound. A suspended chord means that we substitute the, th the major third here for a fourth. So this note here is suspended. It's suspended where it wants to be. It wants to settle. It wants to settle onto that major third, but it's just a little bit above it. And then it can settle. So I'll do the middle eight again. We start with our four chord. Into our one. Our three chord. Four again. Here's our suspended. And we're back into our main theme. It's far more useful for a piano player to be able to understand a piece of music than just to repeat it. So you might be able to play in F with no problem, but if you know what you're doing, then you can play in any key. And the best way to understand a piece is to transpose it, I think, into different keys. 
It's also incredibly useful for a singer who might say, I can't reach those notes, you've got to take it either up or down. So, I'm not the only one. In fact, there are 11 others. So there's 11 keys, isn't there? One. So you can try to transpose that piece of music into whichever key suits yourself. Um, try in C major. C major is always an easy one to have a go at. There's your one chord, your three chord, your six, your four, your five. Finished.